Hello, I'm Kendra Von Esch, and you are listening to my 10-minute daily podcast, Reality Reflections. I bought into what this world said would make me happy. Money, prestige, power. And hey, if it feels good, do it, because life is stressful, so party hard. Do whatever makes you happy. But that didn't quite work out, because I felt even more insecure, full of fear, shame, and anxiety, and never, ever good enough. Then God found me and flipped my reality upside down and transformed my life. And I want this for everyone. So I left my executive career to help others find true acceptance, supernatural peace, joy, and love that only comes from a relationship with God. Here is my reality reflection for today. Man, did I used to judge people. (laughs) Oh my gosh, so badly. I would look at you and within two seconds, I had you in some sort of category. Immediately. I don't know why I was like that. I think it was just the culture that did it. You know, I mean, I don't know about you, but if you watched, oh gosh, what was that? There were 16 candles. And then there was this movie where they were all in detention for the weekend, different types of people in a high school. I mean, cliques are everywhere. They're in high school. They're in Um, our lives, they're in our workplace, they're even in our family. And it's funny because I think we are taught this at a very young age. Even when someone is physically different, missing an arm or in a wheelchair, when people are different than you, I think we've been programmed to just look at them and say, you're different. How do I deal with you? Or do I deal with you? Right? Oh, I'm going to walk in the other direction from this person. They make me uncomfortable. And in the same breath, so did people that visibly wore their faith. I judged them, whether they were Christian, whether they had a turban on their head or any, uh, I don't even know what it is called that's on their forehead. I don't want to say a dot, right? But I, that, I don't even know what it is. And I never took the time to get to know what it is and all of that. So shame on me because I look at myself now after God has been working on me for these last nine years. And I honestly look at people differently. And he brought that into my life so early. Thank you, God. Thank you. Where I was able to look at other people through the eyes of Jesus, I do believe. Because they weren't my eyes or God had transformed them already. I started like being gravitated toward people that were different than me in the office. Spending time with them in the lunchroom where usually I would just run in there, grab a coffee and get out before they started a conversation with me. Taking some people out to lunch that I've never taken out to lunch before. Looking at people in the grocery store or when I'm out shopping and wondering like, for example... You know, the one who has their pants that are like halfway down their butt and their underwear showing. And (laughs) I don't know about you, but all I do is look at it and say, how in God's earth are those things still up? (laughs) You know, they should be on the ground for crying out loud. They're so low. And then you judge them like, why are you doing this? What is your problem? You know, but then... When you look through Jesus' eyes, you look at this person and you say, oh my gosh, I wonder what trauma maybe that person's been through, what attention they're trying to get. They're just trying to fit in with their friends under some peer pressure to look like that. 
Or maybe there's like some true depression or anxiety or some stuff that he's, he or she, I don't think I've ever seen a girl do that. Mostly he is going through. And men don't always ask for help. I don't know. We've all been through those phases, right? And then I just sit there and I think, what is God going to do with this guy? You know, it's the ones that would have made me uh, make all the comments in my head that I could possibly think of are the ones now that I'm like, wow, Lord, what are you doing with that person? Because all of our, that was my stomach. I don't know if you heard that. It sounded like a knock. I'm going to stand up. My microphone's too close to my stomach. (laughs) Okay. Standing up. Okay, but my main thing here is judgment. We should just be looking at doing our life with God. Not doing anyone else's life and not judging how they are living. That includes our children, our spouses, our co-workers, our best friends, our family, our everyone. God is the ultimate judge. We only have control over ourselves. So that's where all of our judgment, I mean, I want us to think the first, it's a process, everyone. It really is. First, we pray for it, right? Lord, please Two things. You want detachment from the world so that you don't have any concern about whether they judge you. And then you need to do the same thing. It's a it's a double-edged sword, this judgment thing and this detachment thing. So you also need to detach yourself from everybody else's life and from judging them. If you're asking God, to help you get away from all the judgment that's coming your way, then you got to, you know, pull your weight too. So when you look at someone and you immediately judge them, someone you don't know, out and about, immediately give it to God. The first step is awareness. And some of you may not even know that you do this. Because it's such a part of your natural brain process, your natural, it's natural to you. It's natural to all of us. Because again, like I said, I think we were taught to do this. Oh, I wish I can remember that movie. Hopefully it'll come to me before the end of the time, because it was really cool. You had the the quote unquote geeky guy, you had the mentally weird one, or maybe she wasn't so mentally weird, but she dressed very mentally weird, acted weird to get that attention. Then you had the, you know, the cheerleader, the quote unquote burnout, burnout meaning the druggy kind of guy, rough guy, maybe he's even doing a motorcycle thing. Who knows? I think he does leave the motorcycle. Anyway, um, then you got the jock. And that's how life is. But we have like even more, that's kind of the people that we judge outside. So we stop, sorry, I got lost where I was. So we got, so we have to say, Lord, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to immediately judge that guy with his pants halfway down his butt. He's your child. I pray that whatever is going on with him, Lord, that you bring him to you so that he has a life of peace and calmness, love and acceptance like he's never felt before. That's what you do. And then you keep praying for more acceptance and love, for more charity. Opposite of judgment probably charity. I don't know that for a fact, but (laughs) I'm saying it is. It's a part of it at least. So when you're with people that you know, maybe it's in a meeting, maybe people just rub you wrong, 
or they're dropping the ball all the time, or they're pointing their finger at you, or you know, you know, just don't like them. Then you have to say, Lord, help me detach from these feelings. Help me love this person as you love me. And then start thinking, this is what helped me. It's more of a compassion thing. So that's actually my talk when I speak to Legatus groups. It's lead with compassion. Lead everything in your life, your personal and your professional, with a compassionate heart. And compassion doesn't mean, I mean, it means love, but it really means to love someone and to, and to pity them. And I hate that word, but to have compassion for their negative and crosses and sufferings, you know, we have empathy for them. We have compassion for them. That is how I started looking at people because I started saying, I don't even know these people that I'm working with. Who knows how this guy or gal was raised? Did they have any love in their family? Were they completely verbally abused, maybe physically abused? Were they one of many and ignored? Were they the less chosen one and their parents always showed it? Showed it? (laughs) I don't know if that's real either. I don't know. In the end, that's where God moved my heart. And what are they dealing with now? Maybe they're having marital problems. Maybe their children are having issues, hooked on drugs, problems in school. Maybe they're taking care of their sick people in their family, parents, or even a child that needs 24-7 care. I don't know. And so who am I? Who am I to judge them for having anger issues or being short with people or being withdrawn, right? And that's the other thing, you know, and then let's, okay, let's take the relationship with our families. And these are people we do know. So it's harder to love the ones we do know. Let's always remember too, it's harder to convert the ones we do know, remember Jesus in his own town had issues converting his own people. So take a breath and use other ways to convert, right? Send videos, send this podcast, send something that you think would interest that person and their particular personality and their state of life. Okay, back to this topic. Relationships with people that you know well, like family and longtime friends, are difficult because we're always growing and we're not always growing in the same direction. And right about now, I was just telling my mom, who's still here, I was and sleeping, <laughs> which is why I'm in the basement, trying to whisper. She, I was just telling her yesterday how grateful I am that my family on my side for the most part, all have the same thinking process about what's going on in the world. I do believe that we all believe in Jesus. Some of us are practicing. My mom came back to the faith. My dad said, you have no idea how much I talk to God and how much I pray the Our Father and all these kinds of things. So so stuff is happening. My older brother Listens to Joel Olstein, not happy about that, but hey, I'll take it better than nothing. His wife, she's Christian, she prays, you know, and so we've got that kind of going on, but we also have the same views of what's going on in the world. And some of us have even more of the same views when you get down into what people would call conspiracy theories, which are not. I mean, if you look at all the conspiracy theories that were out there, that everyone brought to the table, I should say everyone in the mainstream media, they've all come true. Time brings truth to the surface. 
So if you are upset with someone, if you are resentful with someone in your family, if you just dismiss someone or don't ever talk to them, or if you are ignoring someone who needs your time because they're ill, if you are just, you know, getting in lots of fights or just judging their lives, right? You're the one that wants them to be back in the church and they're living this sinful sinful life. Well, you know what? That's not yours to judge. That's God's. So especially for our families, we need to make sure that we offer them to Jesus and Mary. We should consecrate them to Jesus and Mary. You could even go through a Marian consecration. Really what we do there is we consecrate ourselves to Jesus, the end game, through Mary And we give Mary everything, ourselves, our families, our material goods, all of our relate. We give her everything. So technically, if you have already consecrated yourself to Jesus through Mary, you've already consecrated your family. But it wouldn't hurt if you did it specifically for your kids. Start it up again. Get Find a feast day. Count backwards. 33 days and start. Keep praying, keep sacrificing, keep fasting for these people. Because the more you try to convince them through your words, it's going to probably push them away because they're not ready to hear it. What they need to do is to see it. Are you still a swearing, truck driving, foul mouthed person? Are you still talking behind everybody's back, Miss Busybody or Mr. Busybody? Sorry, ladies. (laughs) Are you angry and or passive aggressive or are you something where you're just not being honest and open with family members in your own? Maybe it's your spouse. Maybe it's your own kids. Like this is time for us to be who we are, but we also need to be a witness. Are you getting drunk every night? Are your kids seeing you? And this is my situation. It seems like whenever my kids come over, I'm drinking some wine with everybody because everyone else is having a drink. I'm thinking, you know, maybe one day I should just not, you know, and just be happy to be with everybody and not have a drink. I don't want them to associate that with me. So these are things that you got to kind of be thinking about as we're growing in holiness. Because like I said, our, the way that we live, okay, are you in the car jiggering in and out of everybody and, you know, speeding and being like a wreck, reckless driver? Are you speeding ridiculously on the highway? Maybe you're not in traffic weaving in and out and you got a big fair, you know, because you could take other people's lives in You're taking other people's lives, including your own, in your hands by going that fast. There's just a lot of things that God will eventually raise up to your eyes. So listen, the most important thing, the most important thing is that God is our judge. We are not to be judged by others, nor should we judge them. Nor should we judge ourselves. I like to say we should look at ways that we can improve. You know, let's look at ourselves as marketing Jesus out there as a product. Do we still look like, you know, the 50s version of the laundry soap? Oh, I don't know why. I actually know why, because I just looked at the laundry. (laughs) I have a laundry set up down here in the basement and I was looking at the laundry soap and I was thinking oh yeah I think about like the Brady Bunch you know where they had that box of that powdered laundry and how they were going to the Brady Bunch's house to do a new commercial with the whole family or something like that and you know I like like we should be considering ourselves laundry soap or soap right we want to because we're bringing healing and cleaning. I don't know. All right. Set that aside. We need to be new and improved. So we need to look at ourselves like a product. 
And the only way that we're going to be able to show our new label is not with clothes. It's with how we act. It's with what we say. And truly, it is with some sacramental. So get yourself a crucifix. Layer yourself with, with things that the outside world can see. I'm telling you, I cannot tell you how many times people look at my hat with the cross on it. And how many comments I get. And from people that I would not even imagine. It was the kid. When I say kid, this kid wasn't... He was behind the pharmacy, but he wasn't the pharmacist. He's got to be in his low 20s. And by the time I left, before I left, he goes, hey, by the way, I really like your hat. And I didn't, I did not. Honestly, I kind of looked at him and I'm like, oh, young kid getting on his, getting on his way, you know, oh, I wish he had a little Jesus and look at me judging him. Not even in a negative way. Just wishing he had Jesus, but assuming he didn't. I mean, I guess that is a little negative. And then he makes that comment. So who am I? He's probably a good little Christian guy. Good little. He wasn't that little. He was tall, but all right. I'm yapping too much. You know what I'm talking about. So I told you each time when you do this, even when you do it with someone in your family, you got to call it out, got to give it to God. And then find those ways that you can improve your life. Because I am sure that the judgment is coming right back at you. <sighs> who is she or who is he to talk about my life? Look at how much they drink. Look at how much they smoke. Look at how much they swear. Look at how much they talk behind people's backs. Look at how mean they are. Look at how angry they are. Look how much they fight. Again. How you live your life is so much more important than what you say. <laughs> but they do kind of come hand in hand because that's part of life. Lord, please bring us up to our eyes what we are all supposed to see. What you want us to work on that will have the most impact on us and everyone who knows us, please bring it up to our eyes. Help us see what you want us to work on now, not what we want to work on. Because it might be the hardest one, but it might be the easiest one. All we know is we want to work on the one you want us to focus on. So Lord, please put it on our hearts. As we think about that today, help us realize what it is. Give us the grace to take it on and fill our hearts with purity around this thing that you want us to work on. Thank you, Lord, for our faith. Thank you for guiding us and leading us. Holy Spirit, please guide us and lead us with Mary. Guardian angel, make our messages known and fight any evil around us. Thank you all, you holy angels and saints in heaven, Saint Joseph. Father, thank you for creating us. And Jesus, in your name, your mercy and your love, we pray. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right, everyone, I love you all. Go find something more with God today. Have him bring up what you need to work on to your eyes. And stop judging people as well as yourself. It's God's job. We just need to do the things in our life that make our judgment with him less severe. Work out our salvation here and <laughs> with fear and trembling instead of in purgatory. Have a blessed and inspired day.